Be careful around power lines. Oh, what's up everybody? In today's video, I'm going to show you the idiotic and stupid mistakes that I made on my first rental property. And I'm going to show you what to do instead so you can avoid making these same mistakes. Because the bottom line is when you own rental real estate, you want tenants to stay longer and cause less damage. So let's hop to it and show you the mistakes. Oh, and stay tuned because I'll tell you exactly how I was able to get the money to buy this house at the end of the video. By the way, you have two days left to take advantage of some amazing tax deductions for 2019. Check out the programs linked below and use that New Year's sale coupon. Number one noob mistake, for some reason I had a loyalty to Schlag or Schlaglocks, and this isn't sponsored, but I much prefer the quick set smart rekey locks so everything's keyed the same and it's really easy to rekey. Number two, the old palm tree carpet that was in here, we replaced with new carpet, which meant the dining room, the family room, and I guess the living room, which is all kind of the same space over here because it's not a big house, the hallway and the bedrooms all had carpet. To me, that's a new mistake because carpet doesn't send the cleanest signal and it also doesn't send the vibe of, ooh, nice higher end property. We've since fixed that. Introducing my new favorite kind of flooring. This is a luxury vinyl plank. It's scratch resistant and it's waterproof, which means I could take the same exact flooring that I like. I pick one design and I carry it all the way through from the kitchen to the bedrooms to the bathrooms, to everything. And that brings up newbie mistake number three. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be on a lot of newbie mistakes here. I'm a bit frustrated with my original choice to go with what was popular then, a beige larger tile. Today, I could have gone with a much more timeless subway tile look that's looked good in the past and it still looks good today. Unfortunately, this now looks dated. The good news is it kind of works with the flooring that we put in, but I would have much rather had this be a white tile. Part of me wants to come in here and glaze this all white, but I ain't gonna. <laughs> Now I will say though, a pro move was re-glazing and polishing this cast iron tub when we remodeled this bathroom. That is, we didn't have to buy a new tub because it was already here and we were able to save the original tub, which meant we didn't have to fix all the walls and all the damage around it. Now at the time, these were original oaky looking cabinets. And so we painted and primed these Swiss coffee semi-gloss through some brushed nickel hardware on, which we matched the towel bars to, which was a pro move back then. But today, and I get that I didn't have money. There was like no money that Lauren and I, my wife and I had to spend on the rental property. So we had to be really careful and count every time. We were on this floor scrubbing it with little like abrasive sponges to try to clean the original linoleum crap that was here. And we left that for the last six years. But anyway, this top to me is a little bit of a newbie mistake. I would have gladly put this kind of faux granite in, but I would have loved to wrap this with one of those vinyls that you see people put on on YouTube that make these things look like quartz or marble super cheap and you can do it yourself. Now I now look and see that the light fixture was actually a pro move. It's almost that kind of rustic industrial style, but I can tell that's like a $29 light fixture, but most tenants won't know the difference. However, something big that I would have done differently is I don't really like this mirror. It's a little bit of a personal taste style mirror. I would have much rather done what I prefer to do now. You know those big mirrors that you can get in big rectangles that look really lame and boring? Well, all you have to do is take a little a bit a baseboard like this, probably a little bit of a smaller version, and take that baseboard, make your own frame around your custom mirror, boom, you're good to go. Now, when people first do a renovation, I will say a lot of people get tempted to change out the doors with like a two panel or a six panel door. I'm glad we left the original doors because realistically, it doesn't make a difference. Now, another noob mistake is you see this door stop right here? This is one of those lame boing -y ones, but it's not even a good boing -y door stop. It's like a crappy one. I mean, look at that. The bottom of it has bent. That's when you know you have crap. Throw that crap away. Instead, you should get the solid door stops that you can now put in some nice four and a half inch craftsman style baseboards that we got here. Yes, craftsman. The other noob mistake is this house doesn't have air conditioning, which is okay for the region we're in in Southern California. But to me, the newbie mistake, not having put in ceiling fans. That's a big mistake. 
Each room should have ceiling fans, so not only is there more light in the room, after all this video is super dark and I can blame the ceiling fans because why not blame something? Now another newbie mistake because it screams cheap is I think we have these $30 little mini blinds that we actually left from the seller. They're surprisingly in really good shape, but they don't scream quality at all. Oh, another noob mistake? Check this out over here. Yeah, so when we bought this place, it had a furnace from like 1995, which should have lasted quite a while, except it got fried in a power surge because these 1950s neighborhoods with these old power lines in the back, they don't have the highest quality infrastructure. And little power surges, when the power company turns on and off power, mostly on again, can destroy appliances in your house. So I've since installed this Leviton surge protector, which by the way, if you want to know how to do that, you just call the electrical company, have them remove their lock, you pull this off, you throw a little neutral line in there, you shove it on, you shove the other thing on, and you go, good to lock it up again. <laughs> but I also did one more thing, because remember, we had to replace the furnace now, so guess what else I did? Well, I replaced the furnace, but check this out. You don't know if you've ever even seen one of these. I ordered from Amazon a surge protector outlet that's built into the wall. I guess I could have just put like a little socket one on here. But anyway, I thought I'd put on a built-in one so the tenant doesn't remove it and use it for their computers or something like that. And instead I put a surge protected outlet here to try to protect this furnace and make it last longer because I didn't want to replace it again for a stupid power surge. Now this is another newbie mistake. I cannot stand when people put a bunch of cable like this around. What? Who needs a TV cable in a hallway anyway? This is getting snippy snipped. Now, I made a few mistakes in the kitchen as well. Over here, this was the original Formica countertop. Again, I should have just vinyl wrapped this. You can see the discoloration over here. It's just not like super great. Uh, this, we actually got super lucky and we threw this cabinet in, which was just a really inexpensive, maybe $150 prefab cabinet. And we painted the fronts of it white to match the rest of the kitchen. But we actually found the same countertop on the shelf at Lowe's. That was really convenient. But here's the other newbie mistake I made. Look at this stupid gap on the left and the right. Now the stove's centered a little bit, which makes it a little better. And maybe you could put like a step stool in there or a towel, you could do something with it. Instead, the better way to have done this would have probably been to install a new cabinet on this side, new cabinet on this side, up to the side of the range, and then filler panels on the ends so the countertop could have been thrown on top of that. Today, we would have used a white sparkly quartz countertop instead of this, but this is what we got. Now, while this appliance is stainless, another noob mistake that we made when we first bought this property, and again, we did not have a lot of money, is we installed originally white appliances new. That was a new white dishwasher, a new white range, which we've since had to replace, and a new white vent hood. As much as I don't like the stains that stainless gets, stainless is still what's in. Now, the good news about this property is I did buy it at a steal. I actually got this as a wedge deal because at the time I was a relatively new real estate agent and my mission was educating people on, hey, it's 2011, 12, 13, we should go out there, buy little fixer uppers and make money with real estate. So the beginning of my career was founded around helping people make money by investing in real estate. And that's the same thing I teach today in my real estate courses linked below, including my do-it-yourself property management course and the most popular real estate investing course. By the way, here's a testimonial on screen. And if you follow me on Instagram, you can see a lot more testimonials right here in the little circle. Here's another newbie mistake. See this water softener? Yeah, this is a rental unit. This means we pay about $78 per month to have this rental unit exchanged, I think weekly or every other week, it doesn't really matter. Well, the problem with that is it costs me about 800 to what, $940 per year to have this thing replaced all the time and serviced. I could probably spend like $800, buy my own water softener and have it installed and then the system pays for itself the first year. Now, the original reason we didn't do it was because we didn't think there were any drain opportunities over here, but I've since realized that we can actually drain the water softener up and into the attic and down one of the stink pipes. Ah, I wish I knew that then. <laughs> now, something else that I'm seeing right now is this place needs a little bit of pressure washing. It's not looking that great with this brick and this almost like mildewy looking concrete on the floor. In fact, the entire driveway looks pretty dang dirty. Well, the nice thing about pressure washing is it's 
pretty cheap. Now, the other newbie mistake I made was not installing sprinklers. Unfortunately, when tenants have to hand water, it usually means that tenants are less happy and you get these sort of mud patches that come up because somebody has to constantly move around a hose or one of those little heads that you kind of walk around and water around the yard. It's inconvenient. It probably leads tenants to move. Unfortunately, every time a tenant moves, it costs money because you generally have at least a few days of vacancy to factor in and you oftentimes have to do things like touch up paint and other miscellaneous repairs that you can't look at a security deposit for or it's not even worth deducting. You may as well just get it done and forget about it. Now, what I really liked about the deal was that the entire property already had dual paned windows and what I thought was a relatively new furnace. But the main reason I bought the place was because it was selling for a relatively cheap amount compared to everything else. See, a lot of people get offended by tracked homes, but the nice thing is I was holding an open house as an agent on that house right there and a lady walked in and said, hey, uh, you know, I know this place is selling for, you know, $499,000 at the time. Uh, my place, it needs a new roof. It, it, it's, it's got some problems. It's got some dated elements to it. It's got the original shine carpet. The, the, the kitchen looks older. The bathroom looks older. You know, it needed a remodel. And she says, hey, I, I'm, I'm just trying to offload this for $400,000. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, $400,000. We ended up paying $387,000 for it. The place, after I put 30 grand into it, was worth at least five to five and a quarter because it would have been in better shape and was in better shape than that one. Now, I bought this place with 25% down, but let's be real, as a second or third year real estate agent, I didn't have 25% down. So what I did was, because the first place I bought was such a really good screaming a wedge deal, like I teach in the real estate investing course, I was able to get a home equity line of credit, or basically a credit card against my first house, and take $100,000 out of my first house to help me finance the purchase and renovation of this one. That meant I only had to come out of pocket about an extra 15 to $20,000 to buy the place and I got paid a commission as a real estate agent, which in case you're a real estate agent, I also have a really good course for real estate agents and I teach you how to provide more value and become a no pressure agent. Now it's probably a bad signal to leave this rot as well. So I should probably have that stuff fixed. Ooh, oh, that's not good. Wait, let me do the key test. Look, Bondo. A lot of good that Bondo did. I'm not entirely sure if there's a termite problem here. Let me do what the termite inspectors do. Oh, that's, that's not good. Oh dear. Oh yeah, hmm. Lauren, I think we need to fix that. Be careful around power lines. Oh, gosh. Oh, it went all the way through. I think we got some rot. See, this is why I always say it's important to use quarter inch thick paint. You see the wrinkles here? It holds all of this together. See what would happen without the paint? It would just crumble. Hey, but at least I can water the grass. Now, you know how I talked about pressure washing? It's really good to pressure wash houses that have electrical junction boxes that don't have their holes covered or sealed. It could be quite shocking. Ooh. Now, another thing, it's always a good idea to repaint your fences because it'll actually make the wood last longer. It sort of seals them a little bit. Now, if you're ever going to donate, it's a really good idea to load your car up with all of the toys and then just happen to forget to go donate them every single day you get in your car and just shovel things around, including your Matterport camera and the broken hatchback of, well, the Tesla. And remember folks, safety first. These are my maxi flex. I get them on Amazon, link down below. Um, not supposed to use them for electrical stuff, but uh, I touch power with them. And I don't get shocked. Don't sue me, bro, if you do. This, folks, is a stink pipe. Paint it. This, folks, is a ridge cap on a pretty terrible roof. That is, see all this white fiber? That means all the little sand granules are gone and you got nothing left but, well, a little bit of thin paper. It's probably not good for preventing roof leaks. Oh, and a lot of these chimneys don't have a useful life left. So most of the time we just say, don't use the fireplace. It's decorative only. 
but do put a chimney cap on so it prevents water from draining down and causing more damage. You know, it was about right here when this place was getting a roof inspection and they told me you shouldn't be able to springboard on your roof like it's a diving board. You see that? That's a sign that there's some rot underneath there. Not a good thing, but hey, until it leaks, I ain't gonna fix it. Maybe it is, but the bottom line is, if it ain't leaking, what's the point of doing anything? I could fix that spot and it'll end up leaking over there. And I'm just not ready to replace this whole roof yet because it's gonna cost me like 11 grand to do it. Now I'm ready to get down because the neighbors are starting to look at me weird. Now the last dude mistake was we didn't paint the fireplace. That's dumb. Always paint those bricks, especially if you're going with a more modern scheme. There are times used red brick can look good, so don't sue me bro if you like the used red brick. Just saying, this looks better than what it was. We even tried gray, but gray doesn't work with beige walls. I made that mistake too. But most of the moves I've been making have been pro moves. And if you want to learn to be a pro too, links down below. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in the attic and uh, well check if there are any leaks because uh, there's a little bit of a stain in the roof and uh, the days of well slumming this roof might be over. <laughs> <laughs> 